The following program has been granted an 18 certificate. This means that the program is 18 and is therefore legally entitled to drink alcohol, vote in elections, eat drugs, hunt elk, buy nude pornography and drive rockets. Parents are reminded that one of their children might turn out gay. Grievous Bodily Radio is the prototype communications net for radio users. It can run multiple radio and television programs back to back at a speed high enough to cause epilepsy. If you experience dizziness, muscle twitching and convulsions, simply stop taking heroin. <laughs> Place of the advertised program, we now join Jeff Banks as he's randomly beaten by three men armed with four big sticks in this week's clothes show special. Viewers might be interested to know that events were overseen by evil Alan Freeman. All right, lads, commence. <laughs> All right. All right. A. Violence cease. Violence recommence. All right. This must hurt. Ouch. Violence sits. You're watching Channel 4. Viewers may have noticed that we use the old music there. That's because the new one with the circles is rubbish. Time now for a French film showing late at night. It's subtitled, so that probably means there's some shagging in it. Or at least a good shower scene. Nudity often occurs halfway through the film, so you'll have to stay awake on the off chance, even though you're knackered. Male viewers are reminded to keep one of their socks handy. Later on Radio 4, a new series in which some old vicar dons dog collar and bicycle clips, grabs his helmet and sets off on a personal pilgrimage around the newly ordained cycle paths of Great Britain. He follows the tyre tracks of Jesus, that is, if Jesus had ever come to Britain or had had, had, had a bike. <laughs> Well, here I am in Upper Felching, and I'm sure if Jesus had ever been here, he would, like me, have slipped into the man's head for a goblet of wine, or perhaps a can of hooch. Well, no rest for the wicked. Next, I'm back on my religious bike to visit some other small English village, a feature of which I can link tenuously to this programme's running theme in that rather scrummy Radio 4 way. <coughs> oh. And you can hear the rest of the vicar's journey in Christ on a Bike next Thursday at 4 o'clock. And don't forget you can hear more microphone handling noise and tape saturation on any local BBC radio station. On BBC Two Now, we continue our season of horsey films for girls. Al Pacino and Harvey Keitel star in Abel Ferreira's Ragtail I Love You, the controversial director's dark vision of a teenage girl's desire to own a pony and her promise to ride and love it every day forever and ever and ever. Yes, you're a beautiful horsey. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, you beautiful motherfucker. On Sunday evening at 5.30, there will be nothing on BBC One. For 50 minutes, there will simply be an absolutely blank screen, accompanied by no sound whatsoever. This is because the BBC has run out of period drama and rather than broadcast anything else in the Sunday evening period drama slot, the decision has been taken to leave the airwaves blank. Showing an alternative programme would violate strict BBC Sunday afternoon period drama protocol and would anger the BBC's head of Jane Austen, who has expressed his regret in this short statement. When I examined the period drama cupboard yesterday, 
there was less than half a box of sense and sensibility left, along with two unfinished Pride and Prejudices and a photo of Colin Firth with a wig on. There was simply not enough drama in stock, and we were unable to get any more due to the lorry driver's strike at Calais. We're currently awaiting a delivery of big dresses, horse carriages and attractive muffs. And as soon as they arrive, we'll be off to waste more licence fares money, making the centre of Coventry look like 19th century Dorset. You can see nothing at all on Sunday at 5.30. And there'll be another chance to see it every morning at 9.55, because a bland, colourless waste of time is still better than anything with Kilroy in it. 97 to 99 FM. Yeah, you just turn the TV off. As part of Radio 1 FM's Classic Literature in Conservative Party Politics Week. Weird lipped and strange haired Michael Portillo now reads from Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. Yeah. yeah. As part of Radio, Radio 1's, 1's experiments in innovative technology on a national, national music, music station, station in conjunction with Tomorrow's World Week. The program has, has been, been recorded, recorded on a small mono cassette recorder with a built in condenser mic. A pillow was placed over the microphone before recording began. If you haven't got a new digital audio receiver equipped, equipped to, to pick, pick up, up this, this monumental broadcasting achievement then the optimum listening position for this experiment is to press, press your, your face, face against some soil radio one for that week jude borley and sue walked no more in the town of old Wickham. whether they had gone nobody knew chiefly because nobody cared to know is that it don't forget next week in next week week. Radio 1 will be doing its programs a week early before, before disappearing up its, its own, own arse. bottom. Bottom. Us. MTV News. You hear it. <laughs> MTV Europe has secured the exclusive rights to BBC Television's Songs of Praise. It goes on air this autumn and is believed to be sticking largely to the familiar format. The pilot's already attracted controversy, elbowing the cosy pre-him chat with a retired organist from Suffolk in favour of a rap about crack with old dirty bastard. Long-time presenter Alan Titmarsh is also out to be replaced by mental spice skin out of Skunk and Nancy. Partly to boost ratings, partly to cause small damp areas on lesbian girls. We've got a bang-in preview of the first programme. The Lincoln Cathedral Young Choir Massive sing their song of praise. All right, check this out. The Broadcasting Standards Council has upheld a complaint about the earlier MTV News item. A listener has complained that the item in some way inferred that popular television presenter Alan Titchmarsh was involved in a drive-by shooting in the streets of south-central Los Angeles. We'd like to make clear that Alan Titchmarsh has never been to Los Angeles, and even if he has, he's never fired a semi-automatic weapon. We'd like to apologise to Mr Titchmarsh and his wife Judas Finnegan for any distress we inadvertently caused. Soz. <laughs> Tomorrow evening at 6 on Channel 4, you can see the full uncut version of Toe Pooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, even though it's been completely banned in this country. Following that at 8.30, William Friedkin's The Exorcist, again, totally prohibited in this country. These two films will conclude our We're Channel 4 and we can show what the bloody hell we like and call it art season of films. We'll show anything us, because we're Channel 4, and we're hard, and we don't care. We're going to show 15 to 1 at 5.30 tomorrow. Not the quiz show, mind, but the porn film, where 15 to 1 is the ratio of men to women. I've seen it when I was 12. I was on my own. I bunked off school. I thought I had the place to myself, but my dad was cleaning the windows. <gasps> Jesus Christ! It's like wearing silk. I feel so sexy when I'm wearing one. The new silky towel for women's keeps you fresh and dry all day. I love it. It's so comfortable. I feel relaxed and happy, and I really do feel beautiful and at ease with everyone around me. Because of words like dry, weave, and top sheet, we can sell these towels to monthly women who believe anything that we tell them about absorption. And I've got no stomach cramps. Wearing new silky towels has taken away the pain. That's because these lacy new towels for ladies are impregnated with paracetamol. 
Just pop one on and you'll be free to live your feminine life, guilt-free and pain-free. And it's shaped in a curve, just like your club sandwich. Now I feel like I could be a pleasantly genial queen, sitting on a freshly perfumed, beautiful satin throne. New silky towels for pretty girls who want to keep their period quiet so as not to disturb their boyfriend. If I'm on, I shouldn't take it out on him. This advert conforms to all the sexist stereotypes typically associated with feminine hygiene products. It's also worth noting that this infomercial was written by a man. Right on, sister. Wake up to Hogan on Radio 2. Hello there. It's Old Tell with you on Radio 2. Just a quick mention there to 83-year-old Peggy Jeffries of Dring... Ring, who's celebrating 48 years of blissful wedlock. Or headlock, if it's anything like my marriage. Hope the wife isn't listening. Anyway, here's Renaissance with Northern Lights. Destination uh, Susan. Yes? What is this shit? I'm sorry, Terry. What, what is this mean? shit that I'm playing? Uh, it, it's, I'm it, not it, playing it, it, this. I'm not playing this crap. I know what it is. I'm not playing this crap anymore. Um, Did you not get the memo I sent you? Uh, no. I, that I wrote I, I, down with my own pen. I'm sorry, my pigeonholes been bursting. I said on my playlist, I want Wu-Tang Clan, Mob Deep, EPMD, even Biggie Smalls, God rest his soul. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. So what happened? Uh, 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 this was all discussed. Starting Monday, that would be the new angle for the show. Well, I... Oh, fine, fine, fine. Let, let, let's, let, let's do that. that bit Starting bit. with the next song. So, so what? We're going to sort it out right now. Yeah, We're back uh, on the air yeah, in, absolutely. in one minute. Yes. It, um, okay, what record are we going to play? What record are we going to play right now? Midnight at the Oasis. <sighs> Where's my gun? Good tea time, and welcome to Nationwide. Unfortunately, no one here can impersonate the bloke with the gravelly voice very well, so instead, join me in front of these ill-conceived 70s graphics. Tonight on the programme, we have a pre-recorded film of actress Thora Heard, who celebrates a lot of years in show business by appearing nude on stage at London's Raymond Review Bar. Sensitive viewers who are worried about seeing an old lady's front garden on tea time television are reassured that it's completely obscured by her drooping dairy arrangement. We also look at a new film, Schoolgirls on Heat, which you can only get off some bloke at work. The plot really isn't up to much, but the director's visual sense is only emphasised by the semiotics of the piece. I found that the mise-en-scene created celluloid stimuli, the likes of which are rarely seen outside the works of Tarkovsky, or Eisenstein. Apart from that, there are some right slags in it who get the kid off. In this clip, Helen shows Graham how to make her smile. Schoolgirls on Heat is showing at your mate's house after the pub shuts. Grievous Bodily Radio was written by John Holmes and Andy Hurst. It featured John Holmes, Andy Hurst, Peter Serafinovich, Emma Clark and Mike Checker. The producer was Phil Bakker. A fatal error has occurred in this application and this program will be terminated. 